For the past few years, Mojang has been running a special event during their Minecon live show known as the Mob Vote. This has three to four mobs pitted against each other for the chance to enter into Minecraft. As the name implies, which one gets added is based on a community vote, so whichever mob gets the highest is the lucky winner for that year. So far, there have been five mob votes, including the one for this year, which is between the crab, armadillo, and penguin. Since that vote is happening very soon, I thought it was a good time to celebrate by complaining about how it sucks. So yeah, I, and I know many others, are not fans of this system. But at the same time, there are a lot of people who do enjoy these votes. I honestly can't really gauge which one is the popular opinion. But I thought I should make my case on why I think the mob vote needs to be reworked. Not stopped entirely, but definitely changed. Also, I just want to let you all know that I'm writing this before the 2023 mob vote happens, so don't think I'm making this just to be salty. I'm voting for the crap, by the way. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and let's take a deeper look at these votes. So first things first, what have we gotten from these votes so far? As I said in the beginning, there have been five mob votes which took place in 2017, 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Based on the fact that the past four years have each had one, it seems safe to say that the mob vote is here to stay for at least a little bit longer. The mobs we've gotten from these votes so far were the Phantom, Glow Squid, Alay, Sniffer, and whichever of these dorks win. I'm going to look more in depth with them a bit later, right now I just want to establish what we've gotten so far. Now those are just the winners, each year also has its own set of losers as well. In 2017, we lost the Barnacle, the Great Hunger, and the Hovering Inferno. In 2020, we lost the Moobloom and Isolager. In 2021, we lost the Glare and Copper Golem. In 2022, we lost the Rascal and Tough Golem. And in 2023, we lost... I still don't know, hopefully not the crap. Again, I'm going to go more in depth with them a bit later, but right now we've established our winners and we've established our losers. So with that said, what is the problem with the system and how do I suggest fixing it? Well, to get to that, I think we should first cover a few things that I don't believe are issues, but I have heard people complaining about. I think that makes sense to do as I did a similar thing in my netherite template video. So for our first complaint, one, Mojang is lazy. <laughs> This is not just a complaint I've heard about the mob vote, but also recent updates as well. In the case of the mob vote though, people are wondering why Mojang doesn't just add all of the mobs from the vote. I mean, theoretically, they should be more than capable of doing that. Minecraft is at least a little bit popular, so you'd imagine Mojang has the resources to add as much content as they'd want. That's also why people have been a bit disappointed with updates like 1.19 and 1.20. Neither really added anything major to the game and felt pretty low scale when compared to updates like the Nether update and the Caves and Cliffs updates. Now, I sort of see what people are getting at, especially because Minecraft has one of the biggest modding scenes of any game. People will see how quickly others are able to make mods and get mad at Mojang when they can't match the output. However, I think that's a bit unfair. Now, I'm no game developer by any means, but I can just imagine working on a game officially is much harder than working as a fan. Modders are able to add anything they want without having to consider how it blends with the rest of the game. If one day a modder wants to add Freddy Fazbear, they can do just that. But the Mojang team has to stay within the bounds of keeping the game fairly consistent. I mean, I've seen so many people post videos of mods to Twitter, I'm not calling it out. Asking why Mojang doesn't make stuff like this, but it just doesn't fit at all with the base game. No hate to modders, of course, most of those videos are really well done, it's just that the process between developing the game versus a fan mod are extremely different. Add on that the Mojang team has to develop a billion different versions simultaneously, and I think it's fair to say they're putting in the work. Also back to updates for a second, but can we appreciate that Minecraft is still getting big free updates like this 14 years after publicly being released? Listen, I don't want to sound like a bootlicker or anything, but every other game I play comes from Nintendo, and they abandon their games instantly. I mean, the game that really gave my channel its first boost of subscribers was Mario Maker 2, and they just gave up on that game for no reason. Like, they could be doing Minecraft-style updates for that game forever, but they don't, which is infuriating. So yeah, that doesn't mean to just accept everything Mojang does, of course, but I'm personally willing to believe they're not just lazy. 2. The mobs suck. <laughs> Okay, so the thing is, I kinda agree with this one, but it's not the problem with the mob vote format. Let's just run through the four mobs we've gotten so far. I'm not gonna cover the new one yet, since it's obviously not in the game. Let's start with the newest one being the sniffer. <laughs> All he does is dig up seeds from dirt-related blocks, and these seeds are only for two different flowers, the torch flower and pitcher plant. I mean, right out of the gate, that description already sounds pretty weak. When you start to look at the details, though, it almost gets worse. Once you have the flower seeds, you can only use them to grow one flower, then you have to go back to the sniffer to get more. The sniffer takes forever to start smelling around for a new plant, so if you want a lot of these, it's gonna take a while. On top of that, though, these two flowers are just not my favorite. Obviously, that's purely my opinion, but in a flower tier list, I think the torch flower is just 
just okay, and the pitcher plant is literally my least favorite. The sniffer also takes a bit of effort to get, requiring you to find its egg within suspicious sand. Yeah, that's not the hardest thing in the game, but for two mediocre flowers at best, that's kind of lame. A large majority of people are probably just going to entirely ignore the sniffer's existence, because there's just no real reason to want it. Two flowers just seems like so little, they definitely should be able to find a bit more. Luckily, this is definitely something they could easily add on to in the future, so my hopes are high that the sniffer will at least get a bit better. One really cool thing they could do, that I doubt they will, would be letting the sniffer find a flower that gives you a brand new dye type. Yeah, that would require them to make a ton of new blocks, but that would definitely be a good way to make the sniffer useful. Maybe they could even add back the spring green color from the Minecraft Classic Edition. It'd be kind of funny as it'd fit with the sniffer's theme of unearthing ancient stuff from the world. The LA was luckily a bit better, but it's still pretty niche. Basically, you can give it an item and it'll go around looking for more of that item laying on the ground to toss back to either the player or a note block. For a casual player, I genuinely don't know how you would use this. Like, this is a pretty specific function. For more technical players, though, the LA is actually decently helpful as they're pretty much the only way to automatically sort non-stackable items. Of course, this is only a concern for players that would need to do that, but I think that's a bit more useful than the sniffer's flowers. The glow squid was the second mob boat winner, and upon reflection, is probably the most useful. It will drop glow ink sacks when killed and can be used to make glowing item frames and the text on signs glow a bit. Now, honestly, glowing item frames are pretty lame. They don't produce light, so you don't really need them much. They're pretty good for making a map board, but otherwise, they're kind of unnecessary. The glowing text on signs, though, is a pretty good use. I've done this with pretty much every sign since they were added. So yeah, the glow squid does have a good use, but also they could have just given this all to glowstone dust. It would have honestly made getting the stuff a bit less annoying as well. But since the glow squid did end up winning, sure, it is technically the most useful. And our final mob vote winner was the phantom. Yeah, this is literally the worst mob in the game. It's super annoying. I already ranted about it in my mob ranking, so I won't repeat myself much here. I mean, if you've played the game, you probably already agree with me anyway. So just to recap, the mob boat gave us a mob that lets you get two mediocre flowers, a mob that's really only useful for very specific sorting systems, a mob that has a use, but that could have been given to something else, and the literal worst mob in the game. So yeah, I definitely agree that the winner's track records have not been great. But the reason I don't think it's the problem can actually be seen pretty clearly by the newest vote. Based on what they said, it seems like all three are genuinely pretty useful. The crab's extended reach will make building easier, wolf armor has been requested for years and the armadillo is giving us just that, and the penguin speeding up boats, if it works on ice, would make the already fastest method of travel even faster. But yet, despite all of these sounding like legitimately good mobs, I still have an issue here. I think now it's about time I finally get into what exactly that is. The one single problem that I think plagues the mob vote is the fact that the losers never get the chance to be added again. After every single mob vote, no matter how close it was, the losers are permanently removed from ever having a chance to be added. Now these mobs are stuck to being trapped within the Minecraft spin-off games no one cares about. And also some Lego sets, look I found the move at Target. But yeah, it is so disheartening because there have been some really good ideas here. As I mentioned at the start, there are now 11 mobs that are confirmed to never be added to the game. Since there's obviously only one winner every year, it almost feels like we're losing far more than we're gaining from these votes. These mob votes are not just about which one is the winner, but also what features are set to be permanently removed from ever making it in. I mean, imagine if they did something like that for Smash Bros, where they pit Skull Kid and Shadow against each other and said the other would never make it onto the roster. The internet would explode. I don't trust Shadow fans already, they'd probably kill someone. So yeah, the problem is the permanent removal of these ideas. It's to the point where I'd rather all of the mobs in the vote completely suck than all be interesting. At least if they all suck, we aren't losing anything interesting, but if it's like it was this year, we're sacrificing two really good features for only one good one. So in my opinion, something needs to change. But what about these votes should they tweak? Well, first I'm gonna eliminate something. I don't think they should stop the mob vote entirely. It's very obvious why they keep doing this. It gets a lot of people talking. Whenever the mobs are revealed, everyone in the community is talking about which one to vote for and why. It's a really good way of getting some extra publicity, so if they just stopped doing it, that would definitely hurt the number of viewers at Minecon Live. And even though I have painted a pretty bleak picture of the event so far, it is genuinely fun to discuss with friends and the Insane Maniacs on my Discord server about which one to vote for. So I think they need to find a solution that's not just stopping it entirely, but what can they do? Well, funnily enough, I think they've already found the perfect answer to this question already. See, the mob vote isn't the only vote they've had at Minecon Live, as in 2018 and 2019, they held biome votes. Of course, these were a lot bigger than just one simple mob, as they would overhaul an entire section of the world. In 2018, it was 
between the taiga, desert, and savanna, with the taiga being the winner. That brought with it cherry bushes, campfires, and foxes. In 2019, the vote was between the mountains, badlands, and swamp, with the mountains being the winner. This brought with it the massive terrain changes seen in the Caves and Cliffs update, along with the goats and powdered snow. So what sets these two votes apart from the mob votes? Well, that's pretty simple. The vote here isn't about which biome gets updated, it's about the order these biomes get updated. That means that yes, even the losers will still eventually have their features added to the game, or at least they're still in consideration. I mean, if we take a look at the 2019 vote, even though the swamp lost, it was eventually updated in the 1.19 update, which brought over the mangrove trees, frogs, and chest boats. This system is so much better, because that lets everybody eventually get what they want, and it doesn't make it seem like Mojang is just being lazy. So I think the mob vote mobs should just determine what order they're being added to the game in. Even then, they don't have have to add every mob. We have yet to see the Desert or Savannah updates mentioned in the 2018 vote, but they're at least still on the table. Heck, I wouldn't even be opposed to one year having the mob vote dedicated to some of the eliminated mobs. Now yes, this isn't a 100% perfect solution. I'm sure the stress of two mobs getting permanently deleted definitely helps raise engagement, but I think doing it like this would make the community enjoy the votes a lot more. So from now on, I think the mob vote should just determine the order. Maybe they could even uneliminate the previous mob vote losers. I highly doubt anyone would complain. I also have heard some people People on Twitter say that they aren't permanently removing any of these mob vote losers, but I'm pretty sure they talked about that in the very first mob vote. And remember to vote, because the free ones that you don't vote for, they will be gone forever. Even if that is the case, they should definitely be more clear that the other mobs still have a chance to be added in the future, because right now, everybody is against these votes because of that fact. So in my personal opinion, I think the mob vote should just be determining the order of the mobs, rather than which ones get added. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you Tough Golem fans still suffering from your tragic loss? Let me know in the comments. I know this video is super short, but it's something I felt pretty passionate about and wanted to give my opinion on. Hopefully you all enjoyed it regardless. I also have to gear up for making a ton of videos on Super Mario Wonder here soon, so getting a small video before then will help me out a bit. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.